So the synclavier region is a complicated beast. Today we are going to talk about the multi-tambral aspects of it and we'll talk a bit about the library of presets. So grab a cup of tea, grab a slice of toast and let's get started. The tracks, and you can have 12 of them, are what contain or what can contain timbres. Here you can see there's three lit and so there's three timbres that are active. Uh, Tambas is the Synclavier name for presets. This is the switcher button. So when this is blue, this is these the 12 are showing tracks. When it's red, they're showing partials. It's as simple as that, although sometimes these buttons are used for other things. But the first thing to know is that they're tracks. Right now, I can see that there are, uh, as I say, three active. And if I tap on them to select them, they turn cyan. I see. I've got blast keys, crystal chambers, and church bell. I press a key on my MIDI keyboard. They're all gonna sound at once. Or I can just use the solo button to solo one. So what I can do is I can select several at once and we can just get the blend right. You can see the volumes going up on these. That feels a so I've stacked three timbres to make a different kind of sound and I could pan different ones individually. Whatever option I've got selected, I would use the swiper to change and I can actually select two options at once if I want to. This uh, parameter button has got other settings and I can change the MIDI channel for these tracks. So this white just means it's a track, it's an overall setting. Uh, the blue buttons refer to the timbres, and then the red buttons uh, pertain to the partials, which we'll talk about in a later video. So um, sometimes you can go left and right and you get more than just the three options. So in this case, if I wanted to change the MIDI channel, they're all listening to all of them. I could make them listen to different ones. And as I say, that's what makes this a multi timbral instrument, I guess, is that they can all sound differently from different MIDI inputs, be that a sequencer or a keyboard and it's quite easy to change that. Another way with MIDI inputs is if I press that twice I can now arm it so that's green. So now that's going to listen to the next incoming MIDI event and set the channel. So my keyboard was set to MIDI channel 1. Let's set that back to 1 again. Or to 1. I can also um, set a range quite easily. So rather than listening to different MIDI channels and doing different things like drums and bass and lead and stuff. Um, I can have um, that split across my keyboard. Again, quite easy to set a range and you'll see what happens again. A useful graphic to show you the grading area is, uh, is where the keys will play and then... Okay, let's do that with that one solo so you can actually See, and then it goes into the range. And again, I can double press that to arm that. And I can, by virtue of doing that, I can kind of set up a split. So let's make that the high note of that one. I armed it again. And um, what should we do with this one? We'll just make that one key, shall we? Okay, so now I've got A split. I think it sounded better with it being a, a blend, a stack, rather than a split in uh, Synclavia parlance. So um, let's just reset that. A double tap on all of those resets those, and that will be all. So now we're back to hearing them all at once. So that's how, or the different ways in which you can use the timbres. You could have um, a mix, which is different MIDI inputs. Or you can have a split, different keyboards, uh, keyboard ranges for the different tracks. Or you can stack sounds together, different types of sounds in different ways. And um, when you stack them together, we have um, here different presets. And there's a bunch of stacks. They might trigger at different velocity levels or different pressures. So you can um, 
blend them in that way but bottom line is those are your 12 containers uh, oh uh, you can also if you wanted to select non-contiguous ones if you hold a finger down you can do that so you can quite quickly select many and then change MIDI settings volumes pannings uh, on your on your tracks so how what do we want to do with our tracks well first thing you're going to want to do is load some timbres so reset the whole unit if I select everything that and uh, press cut it will cut all the timbres in those tracks it will also by default cut the master reverb um, I've got nothing now so I'm, I'm starting from scratch so let's look at the library where you call up timbres into your session there's lots of different presets in there I forget what the count is now um, maybe up to a thousand or something crazy like that and they they've all got a different flavor all of the different sound designers have contributed kind of their personality to this and they've made the best use out of the sound engine in here um, so you'll just have to explore what the different ones do I've got different ways of viewing this so this one's quite nice I just get a little cover and it reminds you what one is what or I can just once I'm more familiar I get the list and it's a bit quicker to scroll or if I really want some detailed information <clears throat> there's the descriptions there so as soon as I change the selection here I'm in that region so I'm in that library sorry so I press the timbre those are Paul Schilling's timbres or Anthony Marinelli's timbres Regen Warehouse which is all Synclavier uh, timbres throughout the years but uh, suited to this uh, and, and I guess fine-tuned to the sound engine in the Regen which is an evolution of the Synclavier 2 sound engine so um, once I'm happy I've got a library that uh, I want to pull some timbres out of I can scroll through again I've got different ways of viewing this so I can have lots of detail on them where there is lots of detail or I can just have three lines of text and a bit quicker scroll through or once I get familiar I can have the list so I call up traditional we know that's a split so uh, a harpsichord and a violin perhaps so I've called that up to track one because track one was selected uh, I could also just browse and load sound will immediately call it up or I could look and you see the green blob stays there I know what one I've called up here as I scroll through and I Let's get a uh, monster percussion pack. Let's call that one up instead. Now I press enter, it calls it up. The monster percussion pack, I think pretty much every key is a percussion sound. So this is the enter button, which I just used. So red to enter and blue to back up, B, blue, back up. So this sometimes will do two functions, but typically um, it's enter and it's lit red for you that's really as simple as it gets calling up timbres apart from I can do a speed dial and go even quicker so I don't even need to see that it's on the screen I, I, I know that uh, <laughs> I know that pigeon is 71 so I'll go speed dial 71 pigeon comes up for me call to the keyboard um, I can also search via tags so where I was searching was canonically what we have is eight banks of eight so the first number is the bank and then there's eight entries in each bank which is always been the, the way that the Synclavier has done things or I can change it alphabetically and when I do that I'm not just viewing the timbres on that library I'm viewing the timbres on all of the libraries together so if I know what one is I can scroll through here it's a big long list but maybe I want to go straight away to L press that again and now I'm looking at all the L's so it's like oh yeah log drum was the one I wanted press that log drum is called up for me and then finally tags 
So the green ones are categories. Each timbre has got a category. It's either a, a strings, a keys, a lead, you know, some kind of category of instrument. And they're in green. And then I could also search by adjectives. So I could look for the cinematic ones or the distorted ones or uh, things like that. And finally, there's a couple at the bottom which are yellow that uh, to, to do with the kind of uh, it's just special tags, I guess. Uh, one thing I can do here is combine tags. So if I want something that is a lead, but let's say I want a bright lead, I'll add that. And then I'm looking for uh, the adjectives bright. Now I arrow right, and these are all my bright leads on there. Okay, not a massive amount of bright leads, but call one up, showtime. <laughs> Call another one up. I bet you if I did bright keys, there'd be a lot more. So now I'll take that one off and went here. Oops. Well, that's shown me all of the keys that way. But if I wanted to combine a tag, then I'll stick to bright and combine that. We've probably got a bigger list of bright keys here. So we've got different 11 different right keys so and this is not a demonstration on how to play the keyboard unfortunately this is a demonstration of what you can do on this so forgive my skills but uh, nevertheless I'm going to demonstrate so that's really uh, the library as far as timbres goes there's um, in many of these libraries there's also samples not all of them and the samples can be called up in the same way so I can call up samples to the keyboard by just pressing the enter button but I can also choose what partial those samples go on and I can combine samples in different ways so I'm not going to talk too much about uh, samples until a later video but that's how they work regards to the library when there are samples within the library there's a few libraries on there that don't have any then there's reverbs now a reverb can be sent to the master reverb oh sorry let's talk about reverbs <laughs> there's a master reverb which applies to all 12 tracks and there's an individual reverb that can be applied to individual tracks or, or timbres but they're uh, the same algorithm so I can individually change some of the settings on my reverb algorithm or I could call up a reverb by going preset reverb and we've got just one list it, 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 it's only a few um, parameters that you can change so it was overkill to have more than one list but I can choose quite quickly which reverb I prefer the sound of for my I think we've got some kind of percussion sound on there now and that's changing the parameters of my reverb what I can also do is on under my effects where I have my timbre reverb, I could change the reverb for that particular track. And as well as changing the parameters, if I do choose reverb, I get that same list again. Notice that I'm in the preset, so I'm looking at the preset reverb. If I was in the use, user, at the moment I haven't got an SD card in, but I put in an SD card. Let's do that a second. Which will smoothly bring me on to my next subject, I guess. Saving. <laughs> 